and so, but he's starting to figure out the work ethic piece, and, and I, I'm, I'm excited for him because I think he's got a bright future. He's very athletic. Coach, your athletic. most athletic player on the team is on defense now, maybe, Reese Taylor. What does he give to the defensive side after what we've seen him do on the offensive sure. side? Well, I'll tell you what, and this is one thing I, I believe so strongly. I wasn't sure from a physical perspective that he was going to just go strike somebody, and I was dead wrong. I mean, he is physical and confident in his secondary play. He came here, he wanted to play in the secondary. He wanted to play corner. I mean, he, he believes that's his opportunity for his best chance to be where he wants to be years from now. And he's going to be a returner for us in, this, in a special teams game, and he's going to be a great corner. I think he's going to be really special. I mean, he's so quick, he's so explosive, um, and he's got the toughness to play defense that I didn't know for sure that he had coming out of high school because he always played quarterback, you know. So you just you'll ever see him tackle and stick his, you know, sticking your nose in there and being physical. You don't have to do that when you're playing quarterback, you know. So I saw him make a lot of people miss and throw a lot of balls, but but that's different than playing playing corner. So he's proved a lot to me, and it's something he wants to do, and and he's really good at it. So I mean, I think we got a chance to have you know a really really good athlete on defense. It's going to be a game changer for us. Does having him an athlete of that level in that position where you're allowed able to put him over there as a post offense show you're turning the corner on getting to where you want to get personnel wise yes I think so and to me it's about you know getting enough guys on this team that can make plays you know and, and that, that number of guys is growing with the class we just brought in and then we got you know, other guys we're trying to get in for the future so I, that to me is the key you know just because we still don't have enough receivers on our team yet you know to have the proper number of guys on scholarship playing receiver at Indiana. And so we just got to keep trying to, we want to make sure we get the right ones. And so we just got to keep getting the, putting the pieces in the right spots. Yeah, I would say I see him more price settling in the linebacker. I really do. You know, we've got him there because he, he can play both. He played both in the spring. Um, I, I think you know, I, I think I see him doing that more as being a, you know, he can be a, a safety at times for sure. But uh, I think he's a, I think he's an NFL linebacker. That's what I think he's going to be. Yeah, he's uh, he's a guy that can play Husky or Stinger. And you know, he's 230 pounds, you know, so uh, he can be a big, a big husky. But at the same time, athletically, he runs really well. So you can't have enough guys like that. You know, we, we always try to recruit guys that can play the free, the husky, and the stinger, all three of those. I'm not sure he can is, is a free guy, you know, but uh, time will tell on that. But I do think that his ability to play husky and stinger is definitely there. And that, that excites me because that gives you a lot of flexibility. You know, a guy like Marcino Ball can play Husky and Stinger and Free. I mean, he can play all three of them. And so if you can recruit guys that can play all three of those spots, then you got something special because then you got a lot of versatility. You know, and that's what we try to do in recruiting is find guys to say, hey, I don't care. I don't know where you're going to play yet, but we'll get the best players on the field and then we'll – or get the best players on our team and then we'll figure out. Let's get them on the bus and then we'll get them in the right seat. Um, it seems like nowadays more teams in the NFL and college football are going forward on fourth down, going yep. forward on two fourth down. Is that something you appreciate evaluating how you're playing in the offense? Uh, we have. We studied it. Yeah, and so, you know, we were actually, if you notice, we were more aggressive last year, and that was by design, and so I don't see that changing. I believe in that. I think that's how we're going to win here. And I think that, uh, you know, studies just kind of show, you know, the odds are kind of, you know, in your favor if you're willing to take that risk. You know, there's no, no guarantees for sure. But there's so much data analysis going on now that there's kind of a trend towards, you know, rolling the dice with that because you got a, you know, pretty good chance of converting. You know, and yeah, it's, it's obviously there's, you know, negative if you don't, but you know, if you're not willing to take that chance, then you're probably not a very good leader. So, but we got to take those calculated risks for sure. Spring, there was a lot of discussion about acceleration rather than speed. Have you seen any tangible data to support you getting progress on the acceleration? Yeah, so what we do is, we, you know, Dr. Ray breaks it down in five yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, 20 yards. And, and that's where we have tangible data to analyze, compare from last year to this year. And there's no question. Our, our first step quickness, our burst to the football, our, our power numbers have all gone up. And so, you know, it's, it's encouraging, you know, because it's just that's what that's and that's where the game's played. You rarely run 40 yards. You 
never hardly run 100 yards. I mean, it's it's 10 yard bursts, it's five yard bursts, it's 20 yard bursts at the most. I mean, that's that's where the game's played. So to me, that's what we try to to live in our preparation with. Where's the game played? How's the game played? Let's prepare our guys for that. Rather than you know, one rep maxes, those kind of gone. We don't really talk much about them anymore. We don't talk a lot about what your 40 time is for us. I mean, yeah, we do it for the combine and their preparation for that. But you know, it's miles per hour now. It's kind of what we look at as a gauge, and because it's how fast can you run with your pads on? That's what you play the game. Yeah, I'd say right now it's Marcino Ball, Marcino Ball, and uh, Reese Taylor, probably the top two. Yep. Good. Yeah, I mean he, uh, you know, he won't get hit in fall camp like the rest of our quarterbacks won't. But uh, he'll be fully released, you know, by then. He's he's now. I mean, he, there's no restrictions on him now in any workouts. Um, but uh, like in spring, we just we never had him go with live goes because anybody went rolling into him or anything. But uh, he'll be 100 percent for fall camp. Yep. Pretty much, either caulking or that. Yeah, that never stops. <laughs> I've been doing it, you know, just before I walked up here, you know. So yeah, it's constant. Yes. Yes. Well, just in my office, and so I, I like getting guys one on one. I mean, yeah, I talk to him and see him as passing and talk to him, but that's, that's, that's good, but that's not, you know, it's getting them in my office, sitting down with them and talking to them. And I really, I, I did that. I've always met with the players in the off season, as far as for window of time with the whole team, but I want to do more of that. I want to do it during the season. Like, I never did it during the season. I want to do that during the season. You know, I want to be able to do it during, when I'm on campus, I want to be able to do that. And, you know, instead of studying film, I want to spend and invest in our players. That, to me, is big. You know, and that's what I want. And I want to be. I want to have the time to do that, and I do have more time to do that now. What you see your team play Ohio State Michigan three and four quarters? What would it take to finish one of those games? It is steps. Yeah, it's depth. It's 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 being able to execute in critical times, which fatigue can limit that. I mean, obviously, good players. You know, guys making plays. You got to be able to convert. You got to get stops. You got to be able to. You know, we get. You know, last year you think about. You know, I think about that Ohio State game. So. You know, we, there was about, I think, 32, 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. We force uh, a bad punt. You know, we pin them down. We, we muff, they muff a punt. We get the ball inside the, you know, the 30-some yard line. And the 30, you know, when we got the ball, we're down by, I think, eight or nine points. And, and we got a chance to go score, you know, and cut it to two or kick a field goal and cut it to six. And, and we didn't get anything. And, and that was that was kind of, that was, so we got we got to make plays then. I mean, we got to, we had them. We had them. Their heels are, you know, backs against the wall, and we didn't make them pay, you know. And I can point to several of those even in the Michigan game, you know. Opportunities we had to either get a key stop or, you know, or a key, you know, offensive play that you got to make those plays. And to me, you know, it's more good players. It's more depth to where, you know, they're not as fatigued in those situations. And it's us execute. It's confidence. It's expectation. So those are all, I mean, it's a, it's a game of a play here and a play there. It changes everything. And, that, and one play can change the whole game. One game can change the whole season. One season can change a whole program trajectory. What do you mention breakthrough? Is it winning one of those types of games? Is it the number of wins? I, I don't. I, that's why I love breakthrough because it's not tied to one thing. You know, I talk about spiritual, mental, and physical breakthrough. But, but to me, the, the, the part that people see are the games. Well, you know what? It's, it's having a winning season. You know, it's winning a bowl game. It's, those, those are little simple things that make that, that that's major breakthrough because that hadn't happened in a long, long time. You know, and so. But it, it to me, it's about it's it's beating one of the big boys that we haven't beaten in a while. You know, and all those games have been so close in them since I've been here. You know, that's that's breakthrough. You know, so it's all different levels. That's why it's such a great concept because it's not pigeonholed into one thing. Yeah. A long snapper for four years, obviously just a really stable position. You've got an important spot on the field. What have you seen out of him? Do you expect him basically to kind of be competing to be the guy in that spot? He's excellent. I mean, he's one of the best in the country at what he does, and and hopefully you'll never even have to worry about him because he's doing his job and nobody <laughs> worries about it anymore. But I tell you what, it's funny because you know we obviously he wasn't here in the spring, and and this is the first since I've been here, first time we didn't have Dan. So we get out to spring ball, first time we go to punt, I'm thinking, gosh. 
take him for granted. I mean, he's there doing his job. He's always zipping the ball back there. I don't think a kid ever had a bad snap since I've ever seen him. And uh, he was just so consistent and dependable. And so I think Sean has a chance to be just like that, you know. And so he's a very similar build. Got great skill set. He's really good at it. Now, granny has got to do it for 100,000 people, you know, with, with, which he's never done before. But uh, I expect him to be excellent. So he, you know, barring him, you know, he's the guy. That's why we got him here. So he better do his job. So I'm, I expect him to. You know, he's had the, he's had the best offseason as a complete person. That's combination. He's always worked hard. I mean, he's a, he's a freaky athlete. I mean, what's he number? And on the freak list or whatever they put up with it, you know, and he is a freaky athlete. But his and his and his stamina and work ethic is crazy. I mean, he, he just he can go so hard for so long. It's just it's amazing. And but now he's starting to leave. And he's really sometimes he's tried to, but that hasn't always been the right way. And so he's 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 listening to that, and he's he's maturing as a person, maturing as a man, and he's becoming a leader. And so you know, I think he's the guy. A year from now, you will bring to this. Which if you told me that a couple years ago, I you know as a player, yes, but as all the other stuff, he's just just Marcelino, you know. So, but but I think he's he's becoming the the, the, the person and the player, and, and I think he's going to put it all together and have a great great season. I really do. Well, you know, you, you try to, I will say, you know, we go through and, and our guys and our team goes through and talks about things. Yeah, we want to win our bowl game. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, wherever that may be, whatever that may be, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. We want to go. So that obviously implies several things, but, you know, we want to win our bowl game. You know, and that, that to me is what we're, that's what we're shooting for. You know, and so uh, that could be a, you know, wherever it may be located. I don't know. You know, and that's up to our guys and how hard we play and how well we play and how far we develop. But, but that's that's the expectation. Thanks, Tom.